all questions. Questions are held. Let her have. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. After eight years, even the Liberals agree that the Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. After his flip-flop on carbon tax, his former Environment Minister, Catherine McKenna, said that the Prime Minister has broken her heart and he needs to flip-flop on his flip-flop. The future leader, Mr. McCartney, sa says he's against this flip-flop and Gerald Butts as does Percy Down says that the Prime Minister is not worth the cost and that he should resign. Does the Prime Minister still have the confidence of the Liberal Party? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, every day we work hard to deliver results for Canadians by fighting against climate change, by creating help for Canadians and reducing the cost of living, by helping to build more housing. We're here to defend, defend minorities and to ensure that the economy is working for everyone. We're going to continue to do so as a team because the Liberal Party is focusedly fundest on, fo focused on help to Canadians. Rather than saying that everything's broken, we're here to work hand in hand with Canadians and we're looking forward to doing this every day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He didn't answer if his party supports him. So that's interesting. Mr. Percy Down said that this government was not serious on the economy. He didn't care. They're throwing the money, throwing money on anything that crosses their mind, and they don't care about the rising costs of living or the huge debts that are piling up. Even the Liberals agree that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Is it only Mark Carney who can save the Liberal government? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, we know that we made a choice that the Conservatives don't agree with. We chose to invest in Canadians because confident countries invest in their people. Why they preach austerity and cuts. We were there to provide $10 daycare across the country. We were there to provide the Child Canada Child Benefit. We were there to help with public transit and housing. We were there to help our seniors and our students. All of these programs the Conservative Party has opposed, and they continue to support, also vote against dental care for children and help for Canadians in the need. We are going to com continue to be there every day for Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister paused the pain of the carbon tax for only some people. The Liberal Rural Affairs Minister said, well, other people should have elected Liberal MPs if they wanted to be able to afford heating their home or feeding their kids. The Prime Minister has not denounced that viewpoint. In fact, he's doubling down on punishing people elsewhere. But Liberal MPs in Sudbury, Thunder Bay, North Bay, Sault Ste. Marie, they have starving constituents who are worried about the heat going out as well. Will they have a free vote on my motion to keep the heat on and take the tax off for everyone this Monday? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. As a government, we're phasing out the use of coal because it's dirty and bad for the environment. We're now moving on phasing out home heating oil because uh, it's dirtier, more expensive, and uh, is disproportionately relied upon by lower-income Canadians who don't have other choices. Over, over half a million Ontarians, Mr. Speaker, heat their homes with home heating oil. This program and this approach will not just give them a break, but in working with the Government of Ontario, will deliver heat pumps uh, for Canadians right across the country. I invite Saskatchewan to work with us as well. We need to get Canadians off home heating oil. That's what we're going to do. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. With an answer like that, he's clearly not worth the cost, and he didn't answer the question as to whether or not his MPs would have a free vote, which begs the question whether his NDP MPs will get a free vote. 
the Saskatchewan NDP has just voted to endorse my motion to give oh. equal tax-free heat for all wow. Canadians. That is the position of the NDP in BC, Manitoba and Alberta as well. Now the question is whether the NDP will vote against its cash-strapped constituents and in favour of the Prime Minister. So can the PM tell us, was, is this vote part of the coalition agreement or does the NDP have the freedom to vote for their constituents? <laughs> Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition wants to talk about places across the country. Let's talk about them. 20,000 Saskatchewanians heat their homes with home heating oil. 50,000 Albertans and uh, about 100,000 British Columbians, Mr. Speaker. That is dirty, it is more polluting, and it is more expensive, particularly for the predominantly lower-income families that rely on this. That's why we're moving forward to replace them with heat pumps, uh, working with the provinces to deliver free uh, heat pumps for lower income families so that they can save money and fight pollution at the same time. This is about helping Canadians as we fight climate change, which the Leader of the Opposition has no plan for. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister save his political bacon, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. And we know that because he's now admitted that his carbon tax is not worth the cost of oil for some people in some regions. My motion simply says that all Canadians get the same break. After all, a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. Yesterday, the Prime Minister indicated that he wants to have a carbon tax election on his plan to quadruple the tax to 61 cents a litre on heat, gas, and groceries. So will he confirm whether or not he considers my motion to keep the heat on and take the tax off a confidence vote? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, home heating oil is dirtier, more expensive and more relied on by lower income Canadians across the country. 1.3 million households across this country rely on home heating oil. That's why we're working uh, with the provinces that want to, to replace them for free with heat pumps. That's what this is about. Now, Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition uh, is making a serious mistake if he thinks uh, that Canadians are not concerned about the environment or that Canadians don't know that protecting the environment does go hand in hand with creating good jobs and prosperity for them across the country. Uh, that is a conversation I look forward to continuing to have over the next two years with Canadians. Here, here. <laughs> the Honourable Member for Ballet Chambly. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Quebec government announced its immigration targets, i.e. how many people Quebec will be able to welcome and to teach French to. And the federal government did the same thing, and they're not at the same place at all. Nevertheless, at the same time, I asked all members, including the Minister of Immigration and the Prime Minister, if, if they would accept to consult Quebec to set 2024 targets. The Minister of Immigration voted yes. Should I assume that the targets yesterday are only interim and they will consult Quebec? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as my honourable colleague knows full well, for years we've been committed with the provinces, including Quebec, to discuss immigration and their capacity and desires and the future of immigration across the country. Quebec, of course has its own immigration targets, and our immigration plan wants to strengthen the system to extend the benefits of immigration in Quebec and across the country, also provide hundreds of millions of dollars every year to Quebec to help integrate newcomers and also teach them French. And we'll always work hand-in-hand hand to make sure immigration goes well with Quebec and other provinces. The Honourable Member for Ballet Chambly. It's always been true for health as well. We always say that we've talked with them, but we've never changed, any changed anything. But yesterday, he voted. He said, yes, I'm going to consult Quebec before setting targets for immigration. And his, and his minister was announcing them. So 
they should be coherent and speak with someone Quebec. Otherwise, they need to be aware of this. Quebec has to be able to teach French to the immigrants, immigrants that come. Otherwise, they lose, lose their waiting in the Canadian Federation. What will the conclusion be, Mr. Speaker? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, we have provided hundreds of millions of dollars every year to Quebec to help teach French to immigrants. Quebec has established its immigration targets and will always continue to work with them. For months and years, we've been working with them on immigration. We're going to continue to do so. So, yes, we did support the motion that said we'll continue to speak with Quebec and the other provinces while we establish targets, and we're going to continue to do so responsibly, reasonably, and ambitiously for the future of our country. The Honourable Member for New Westminster Burnaby. The coal is setting in. Heating costs are adding to families' already tight budgets. And this government says it's only willing to help if you voted Liberal. It's shameful. The NDP be NDP's plan to eliminate the GST on home heating will put more money back into the pockets of everyone across the country while protecting the environment. Again, the Conservatives have said no to this NDP proposal. Will the Liberals eliminate the GST on home heating to help families who are already struggling? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I know, Mr. Speaker, that my honourable colleague is truly concerned about the environment and climate change and wants to help Canadians to be able to face the cost of living. And that is why he understands that with more than 100,000 families in BC who rely on home heating oil, it's a big challenge for them in terms of their wallets and the environment. So we have an approach that will replace this home heating oil in BC with heat pumps, and it'll help families to face affordability. And I look forward to continue working with him. The Honourable Member from Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Liberal member for King's Hand said we should do our homework when it comes to heat pumps. Well, you know who did his homework? Perry from Smithers, B.C. He's a teacher, after all. And for a year and a half now, he's been trying to jump through all these government's hoops to get a $5,000 heat pump rebate. I talked to the folks at Efficiency Canada, and they told me unequivocally this government's heat pump program does not work for people on low income. So will the Prime Minister commit to offering the same deal he just offered Atlantic Canadians for for heat pumps to all Canadians who heat with fossil fuels. Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Yes, that is exactly what we are doing. We are offering the same program for heat pumps that we have with Nova Scotia, PEI and Newfoundland and Labrador to all provinces across the country. All they have to do is join us in making sure we can deliver heat pumps for free to low-income Canadians. There are 1.3 million households across this country, half a million in Quebec, a quarter of a million in Ontario, tens of thousands across the provinces that need to replace those heat pumps to clean the air, to save their wallet some money. That's exactly what we're doing. I look forward to working with BC and all other provinces on this program. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. The Prime Minister said Tuesday that there will absolutely not be more carbon tax exemptions under his watch, but Canadians struggling with the high cost of gas, groceries and heating their home have a word about that, or want a word about that. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, the Prime Minister is only giving the relief to a lucky 3% of the country, specifically where his poll numbers are in the gutter. He's already admitted that the carbon tax makes life harder, so will he let his his MPs have a free vote on our motion on Monday to keep the heat on and take the tax off for all Canadians. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I noted the phrase, a lucky 3%. 
These are people who pay two to four times the cost of natural gas. These are folks for whom their costs have gone up by 75 percent during 2022. These are not the lucky three percent. We have focused on people who actually have a strong affordability challenge because of the inordinate cost of heating oil. We've put in place a measure that will ensure affordability, but will do so in a manner that fights climate change. Truly, a lucky three percent? Really? Well, The Honourable Member from Thornhill. This is exactly what the Prime Minister does when he's desperate and fa flailing, not confident about his leadership. Canadians in other parts of the country now, now have one more reason to regret voting for them. Like in Northern Ontario, where a minister at the Cabinet table has sold out her own neighbours and left them out in the cold. So will she vote with those who sent her to this place and scrapped the tax yep. on all home heating? Or Will she vote with the Prime Minister and remind Thunder Bay that she's just not worth the cost? The Honourable Member, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know what she will do? She will stand with the folks that are, have an affordability challenge related to heating oil. They will apply in every province and territory in this country where provinces step up to co-deliver co with the federal government. It is, a, it is a plan that will address the short-term issues for those folks who are most pressed, but do so in a manner that will save significant dollars in the long term. It will ad address it in a manner that is consistent with fighting the existential threat of climate change. And I say again, Again, in this House, it is a, a, a shameful thing that in this country we still have a political party that does not believe in the reality of climate change and has no plan to address it. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Caledon. What's actually shameful is how they continue to divide Canadians every chance they get. Now it's about heat. Siggy in Dufferin just paid $100 to, fit, to heat his home for one month. $100 in carbon tax. In the Maritimes, Siggy would pay zero, dividing Canadians. Siggy's on a fixed income. He can't afford it. They're basically saying to him he should freeze in the dark. Why don't they stop dividing Canadians? And will they take the tax off so Siggy can keep the heat on? The Honourable Minister. The only folks in this chamber who are dividing Canadians is the Conservative Party of Canada. Exactly. We are focused on ensuring that we address what is a significant affordability challenge. The, the heating oil costs two to four times what natural gas does, and it appreciated by 75% in 2022. It is time that, they, that the Conservatives stop playing partisan games and focused on good public policy that addresses critical issues that face Canadians, but does so in a manner that protects affordability and addresses climate climate change, once again, I would say it is shameful that they have no policy to address climate change. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Caledon. A minister making $300,000 a year, being driven around in a limo, says I'm making a political stunt when I talk about a retired senior who can't pay the carbon tax. This behaviour by them is disgusting. And not all Liberals have to behave that way because on Monday, a common sense Conservative motion to axe the tax will take place. They don't have to behave like a limousine Liberal minister. They can stand up for their constituents. They can vote to take the tax off so people like Siggy can keep the heat on. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In, in the awkward position of contradicting uh, my colleague here in the House, in fact, on the other side of the House, they do have a plan. They do have a plan, and in fact, they had that plan, and some of them owe their seats to that plan. It was a carbon tax plan. It was a, the, I don't know, the Aaron O'Toole Christmas wish book of, uh, of greeny things that this Conservative Party will pick out just in time for the holiday season. Mr. Speaker, once again, with the price on pollution, we put cold, hard cash back into the pockets of Canadians, not the O'Toole Christmas wish book. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hello. Order. Or you can just not 
I'm certain all members would je suis certain que I'm sure that all members would like to hear the question from the Honourable Member for Eau Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, let me give you a few facts. The carbon tax affects the price of food in Quebec, and the second tax will apply to Quebec. The Bloc wants to hike Liberal taxes on gas and food. A record number of Quebecers use a food bank each month. The PM has just announced a carbon tax break, but only for Atlantic Canada. This is unfair and illogical. Will the Liberals vote with us on our common sense motion to eliminate the carbon tax on all forms of heating for all Canadians? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The price on the pollution puts more money back in the middle class Canadians' pockets. Climate change, we know that the leader doesn't believe in what I've just said, but does my dear colleague agree that we need to meet with former colleagues from the University of Laval for a 101 class on the price on pollution? The Honourable Member for Eau Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to tell my colleague, the member from Quebec, that his Atlantic colleagues had another version of the price on pollution, as he calls it. What we saw in Atlantic Canada, that people were struggling in, and, in Atlantic Canada, and the Prime Minister had to flip-flop and eliminate the carbon tax. What we're asking is to be fair for all Canadians and Quebecers, because the federal carbon pri price also inc increases the carbon market in Quebec, which has doubled. So will the Bloc vote with the Liberals and perhaps the NDP f to cut the carbon tax for all home heating? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't count one or two or three, but four members from the Leaders' Caucus that supported a price on pollution in Quebec. How many others, Mr. Speaker, are hiding that have changed their opinion since they became Conservatives? And the message I have for them, Mr. Speaker, is to don't be afraid of their leader and to respect their opinion, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> The Honourable Member for Lac Saint Jean. Mr. Speaker, yesterday at 11.30, the Quebec Immigration Minister said that she had not discussed targets with the federal government. At 3.30, the federal Immigration Minister voted in favour of a motion to review new targets after consultation with Quebec. That then at 4 p.m. he made public the targets for 2024. If the Immigration Department were as quick to manage files as the minister is to renege on his vote, we wouldn't have to have two million backlogged files. Will he respect his vote and review his targets? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad the member opposite has brought this up. I'm proud to stand in the House today and re-echo that yesterday we tabled our new immigration levels plan for 2024 to 2026. Our plan will ensure immigration continues to grow in our, our economy and provide stabilized growth while balancing pressure on housing, infrastructure and essential services. Mr. Speaker, immigration is important in Canada and we will continue to embrace newcomers and ensure they have the, the support they need in the new communities. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, there was no consultation. Quebec confirmed it. And better still, the Minister of Immigration himself admitted yesterday at his press briefing this was the case. He explained to reporters that he'd spoken to Christine Fréchette about foreign workers and refugees, but never about the 500,000 immigrants per year. Mr. Speaker, the minister committed to consulting Quebec before setting his thresholds. He has confirmed that he has not done so. So... Will he go back and do his homework, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, my colleague knows full well that Quebec sets its own immigration thresholds by consulting various stakeholders and organizations. It has its own needs. And of course, when we establish our targets, we discuss this with Quebec. But I find strange is that the, the bloc is never happy. They are angry that we vote against their motion 
and they're mad because we're voting for their motion now. They're just a bunch of grumpy Smurfs. <laughs> Order, please. I'm sure that everyone would like to listen to the question from the Honourable Member for Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Minister told the Bloc that questioning Quebec's capacity to receive immigrants was bad faith and a refusal to listen to what's going on. I'll tell you what's in bad faith. It's setting record immigration levels without even trying to find out our capacity. And I'll tell you what's in bad faith. Refusing to consult Quebec bad faith and refusal to listen could be the title of the plan the minister unveiled yesterday. Is he going to bin it, his plan, and consult Quebec to present thresholds based on reality? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Speaker, once again, the Bloc wants to seek quarrel, quarrels with the federal government. We are investing in French, even in Quebec. We have invested tens of thousands of dollars, new funding as part of our action plan for French learning. Nevertheless, we've also given Quebec $500,000 to invest every year. Is the leader of the bloc against this funding? We have a plan to support Quebec and to provide investment across the country and in Quebec as well. The Honourable Member from Foothills. Monday we'll be voting on a common sense conservative motion to axe the carbon tax on home heating for every single Canadian. That's right. It's snowing in southern Alberta, it's cold, but it shouldn't be a luxury to heat your home. And yet when this Prime Minister quadruples his carbon tax, Mountain View Farms in my riding will be paying $480,000 a year in carbon taxes. But this Prime Minister says no carbon tax relief for Alberta. But on Monday, the Liberal members from Calgary Skyview and Edmonton Centre have a chance to defend Alberta and vote with us to end the tax and keep the heat on. Will they do it? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My honourable friend across the aisle is forgetting some facts, which is the, uh, the price on pollution is put in, 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 in such a way that there is a rebate that goes back. 80% of Canadians get more money back, and in fact, Alberta, Alberta family of four gets $386 per quarter. It is more than what people pay in terms of the price on pollution. The exemption, the, the pause for three years for home heating oil is based on the specific issue around the, the uh, cost associated with home heating. It is done in a manner that is consistent with continuing to fight climate change, which is what a price on pollution is all about. The honourable member from for, excuse, the honourable member from uh, Courtney Alberni. Oh, the cost of living sorry. crisis Canadians lost the cannot list. afford the therapy. The honourable member from uh, St. Albert, Edmonton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On Monday, the NDP will have the opportunity to show who they work for, the Prime Minister or Canadians who want the tax off and the heat on. It's cold in Edmonton, and yet Edmontonians are being penalized as a result of this NDP Liberal government's punitive carbon tax on home heating. So, is the Liberal minister from Edmonton going to order the NDP MP for Edmonton Griesbaugh to once again vote against his constituents, or will he be permitted to vote with Conservatives to axe the tax and keep the heat on? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we work each and every day for all Canadians, Canadians who live in every province and territory in this country. We do so in a manner that ensures that we are addressing critical issues in a thoughtful way and making good public policy decisions. We are not playing partisan games that are played by the members opposite. At the end of the day, we are focused on ensuring that we are addressing affordability concerns, legitimate affordability concerns, in a manner that is consistent with addressing climate change. I say once again, Mr. Speaker, it is shameful that on that side of the House we have a bunch of climate deniers. The Honourable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton. 
Mr. Speaker, last year the NDP voted against our common sense conservative motion to scrap the carbon tax on home heating. The Liberals have admitted that these taxes are not worth the cost after they exempted Atlanta, Canada. But once again, left Albertans out in the cold. So, is the Liberal Minister from Edmonton going to order the NDP MP for Edmonton Strathcona to once again vote against the wishes and interests of her constituents, or will she be permitted to axe the tax to keep the heat on? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. $340 million in damages from storm in Ontario. Over $720 million from the wildfire in BC. Over $300 million from storms in Alberta and in the prairies. Over $170 million from flooding in Nova Scotia. This is what climate change has cost Canadians just this summer. And these are insured costs, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Total costs are three times that. The conservative, the, the climate-denying Conservative Party of Canada would like us to believe that climate change isn't costing anything to Canadians. It is costing Canadians hundreds of million dollars every year, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Edmonton, Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, more than 400 Canadians are trapped in Gaza, including Ahmed Al Hilo of Edmonton. Recovering from surgery, unable to transport himself, first he was told by Canadian authorities to stay where he is, then to evacuate to Rafah, then to stay put again, as Canadians may not be allowed to cross into Egypt. While this government ignores calls for a ceasefire, Ahmed is struggling to survive. And today we've learned that not a single Canadian is on the evacuation list. Why isn't Canada? advocating for the lives of Canadians in Gaza, and when will the Liberals call for a ceasefire? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is dire. Many Canadians are worried about their family and friends. Yesterday, we saw the first wave of foreign nationals leave. I want to reassure Canadians that we are in regular close contact with Egypt and Israel to push for Canadians to leave as soon as possible. We continually try to reach all Canadians' permanent residents and their family members to give them the latest information. This is why we continue to call for humanitarian pauses to get Canadians out, to get humanitarian aid in, and for all hostages to be released. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now it's the Honourable Member from Courtney Alberni. Mr. Speaker, with the cost of living crisis, Canadians cannot afford the therapy they need. If they try for public care, wait lists are months to years long. There's no post-pandemic recovery plan to help people with their mental health. So many are suffering in silence. This is not acceptable, especially after the Liberals have yet to deliver on the $4.5 billion mental health transfer. For a government that claims to champion mental health, they sure do delay and disappoint. Breaking this promise will cost lives. Will the Liberals change course and deliver the mental health transfer to get people the help that they so urgently need? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, thank you, and I thank uh, my honourable colleague uh, for his question. His commitment to mental health is something that I share deeply and profoundly. Uh, in his home province of British Columbia, the agreement that we made uh, to see over the next three years uh, a really historic amount of money flow to help in all aspects of health care, including mental health, was exceptionally important. Uh, we're committed not only to see that in British Columbia, but across the country. We have much more work to do in mental health in all aspects of mental health. This is going to require a whole-of-government approach, and it really requires all of us to think about how we can uh, do everything we can to treat each other better and put mental health at the front of our workplaces and in our lives. The Honourable Member from West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country. Mr. Speaker, people in my riding of West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country, and right across the country are grappling with the housing crisis. Now more than ever, they need more affordable housing options like co-ops. In my home province of British Columbia, 275 co-ops provide safe and affordable housing to well over 15,000 people. We need governments to build on this by promoting and expanding co-op housing across the country. But earlier this week, when asked about social and co-op housing, the Conservative leader said, we do not need a Soviet-style takeover of housing. How does the Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities respond to that? The Honourable Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, when it comes to affordable housing, the Conservative Party couldn't be more out of touch. Referring to co-ops as Soviet-style housing is a slap in the face to the quarter million Canadians who live in homes like that. This isn't the first time I've seen him criticize middle-class Canadians' living arrangements. Just this past summer, he labelled a woman's home in Niagara a shack on a live video. Mr. Speaker, uh, Canadians need bold federal leadership to solve the housing crisis, and that's what we're going to deliver. The Conservative leader who insults middle-class homes while he goes home to his own government uh, paid for housing arrangement simply doesn't get it. It's reckless behaviour. We won't stand for it. The Honourable Member from South Surrey, White Rock. The BC NDP Premier has demanded carbon tax fairness and equal treatment for British Columbians. The NDP member for North Island Powell River votes with her Ottawa boss, the Prime Minister, punishing people in Campbell River struggling with high home heating costs. On Monday, we'll vote for our common sense plan to take the tax off all home heating for all Canadians for good. How does this carbon tax coalition work? Will the PM require the NDP member for North Island Powell River to vote against the Conservative plan, or will she vote with us to keep the heat on and axe the tax? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm glad the Honourable Member raised the Government of British Columbia. I had the opportunity to speak to my counterpart from British Columbia this morning. We will be engaging British Columbia in a code delivery arrangement to ensure that 10,000 British Columbia households that are on heating oil will get a free heat pump and get them off to reduce their costs on an ongoing basis. But I would also say, Mr. Speaker, that affordability is also about the economy and jobs. And I would say what's happening in the committee, in the Natural Resources Committee, with the, the obfuscation by by the, the opposition is a shame. It is destroying jobs and economic opportunity for Newfoundland, Labrador, and for Nova Scotia. You should be ashamed of the behavior there. The Honourable Member from South Surrey, White Rock. I'm never ashamed to help keep home heating costs down for all Canadians, Mr. Speaker. After eight years, Canadians know this flailing Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Seniors in Smithers shouldn't be punished for heating their homes. And the BC NDP Premier agrees. Common sense Conservatives will axe the tax on home heating for every single Canadian. Does the NDP member for Skeena Bulkley Valley have a choice on Monday's vote, or must he vote with his political master? Will the Prime Minister require that that NDP member to vote his way, or is he going to support our Conservative plan to keep the heat on and axe the tax? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and my honourable colleagues should know that the 10,000 uh, homes in British Columbia that actually utilize heating oil, yes, they will actually have access to free heat pumps because the government of British Columbia is stepping up to work with the government of Canada to ensure that that will be the case, addressing affordability concerns, not just for the short term, but for the long term, doing so in a manner that is consistent with this government's commitment to fight climate change, a commitment that is shared by governments around the world, a commitment that is shared by every party in this House, except for the Conservative Party of Canada. Exactly. The Honourable Member from Barrie Innisfil. It's not a luxury for seniors, families and single parent families to heat their homes, regardless of what type of fuel they use or what region of the country they're from. And after eight years of this Prime Minister and a year and a half of the NDP Liberal Coalition, Canadians realize that they're not worth the cost. On Monday, the NDP will have a choice to make. Support their constituents who are suffering from energy poverty or support a panicking Prime Minister. Will the Prime Minister force the NDP with what little dignity they have left from their coalition agreement to support the people they represent to keep the tax off and the heat on? Then I have minister. Uh, sorry, the honourable minister. Speaker, the member opposite mentioned families. Well, everything that we do at the heart of our actions on this side of the house are focused on ensuring that we're there for families. 
and I look to building a national early learning and child care system as just one way that we are looking to support families, introducing affordable, high quality, accessible child care across this country saves families hundreds of dollars each and every month, and that's just one of the ways that we are working to make life more affordable for Canadian families. The Honourable Member from Provence. Mr. Speaker, it's been eight long years, but on Monday, the NDP have a chance to show who they work for. Is it for the Prime Minister, who's just not worth the cost, or for Canadians who want the tax off and the heat on? Here, here. It's cold in Manitoba. It gets down to minus 40. It shouldn't be a luxury for folks to keep the heat on. The member from Churchill and her NDP colleagues will have a chance on Monday to show who they work for. On Monday, will the NDP vote with the Liberals or will they vote for Canadians to axe the tax for all forms of home heating? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm glad that the Honourable Member re uh, referred to his home province of Manitoba. The new government in Manitoba has reached out to the federal government to engage a conversation about co-delivery for the thousands of homes in Manitoba that actually use heating oil to ensure that they will be addressed in a thoughtful and affordable way. I congratulate the government of Manitoba for being proactive on this, uh, on this important issue and its continuing commitment to fighting climate change. The Honourable Member for Terrebonne. Mr. Speaker, since June, the Federation of Independent Business has been warning that many small and medium enterprises are headed for bankruptcy. Well, the Federation has updated its figures, and almost nothing has improved since then. As of now, over 220,000 businesses are at risk of failure if the federal government does not extend the repayment of emergency account loans without loss of subsidy. 220,000 SMEs still have neither the cash nor the means to borrow more to repay the loans. When will this government finally understand that these businesses will fail without adequate repayment deferrals? The Honourable Minister. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker. We have not given up on small businesses. We supported them during the pandemic and after. What did we do to support them? We created the Canada Emergency Business Account to help businesses remain open. And what are we doing now? We are offering more flexible options so that they can re repay their CBA loans. What else is our government doing? We are listening to small businesses around the country, and we are supporting them, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Terrebonne. Mr. Speaker, 18 days, that's not repayment flexibility. In my riding alone, 72 SMEs are at risk of bankruptcy if the federal government doesn't do something. These are family businesses that I know, where people have worked their whole lives. These businesses also employ hundreds of people, Mr. Speaker. If the federal government doesn't stop being intransigent towards our family businesses, in Terrebonne alone, hundreds of jobs could be lost. Who among the Liberal ministers is going to help? The Minister of Small Business? The Minister of Finance? Who will come to my writing and explain to Natasha, Sylvain and Eric that they're going to let them down because of so-called fiscal restraint? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for her question. I would like to remind my colleague that over 900,000 businesses were saved by our government. If we hadn't been there for them, those businesses would have had to close shop. And we have offered two repayment deadline extensions. We have offered more flexibility for refinancing and for loan forgiveness. So we are supporting businesses. We always have, and we will continue to do so time and time again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Mégantic lérable On Monday, all members of this House will be called upon to vote in for our motion to eliminate the carbon tax for all forms of home heating for all Canadians permanently to support all Canadians. But after eight years under this Liberal government, they're swimming upstream and they even the Bloc Québécois wants to speed up the carbon tax and drastically increase it. Voting for the Bloc, they're not worth the cost. What about the Bloc Québécois leader? Will he vote against our motion on Monday? 
The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to correct something that was said in this place earlier this week. The Governor of the Bank of Canada said that each year carbon pricing contributes to 0.15 percent of inflation, which he describes as a minor, tiny effect uh, annually. So the carbon tax does not increase of everything, increase the price of everything. That is inaccurate, according to the Governor of the Bank of Canada. The Honourable Member for Mégantic Vérable. Yes, but he should look at his figures and do his homework a bit more because, in fact, 16 percent of inflation is affected by the carbon tax, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, here's my next question. The NDP only has one Quebec MP. I'm interested to know whether the NDP will vote in favour of our motion to eliminate the carbon tax on all forms of home heating. Will he support Canadians and Quebecers or the Liberals? Will they support the thousands of Quebecers who are using food banks every month? After eight years of these policies, will the Prime Minister allow the Bloc and the NDP to vote freely of their own accord for our motion on Monday? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, I find it surprising that the Conservatives are quoting the Bank of Canada governor all while they are campaigning to get him fired. Mr. Speaker, the governor of the Bank of Canada recently confirmed that carbon pricing only contributes 0. 0.15 percent to inflation and that carbon pricing will not have long-term effects on Inflation. That is what the Governor of the Bank of Canada said, Mr. Speaker. From Niagara Falls. Speaker, it's cold in Northern Ontario. It's not a luxury for residents of Northern Ontario to heat their homes. The Prime Minister has created two categories of Canadians, those who got a temporary pause on the carbon tax on home heating and those that didn't. The Prime Minister has been clear that he opposes providing relief from his unaffordable carbon tax for all Northern residents. My question is, will Northern Ontario MPs be free to vote with us on our common sense conservative motion to take the tax off and keep the heat on for all Canadians? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I've said a number of times, uh, the issue around heating oil is it is two to four times as expensive as natural gas as a heating source. It has accelerated by 75% in 2022 alone. It is creating significant challenge for folks. We have developed a program that will ensure that we are able to address that in a long-term sustainable way through the implementation of, of free heat pumps. That program will apply in any province and territory that is willing to step up. It certainly is, a, 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 is open to the government of Ontario, and I look forward to discussions with my counterpart in that regard. The Honourable Member from Etobicoke Centre. Mr. Speaker, we've worked very hard to ensure that Canada's unwavering support for Ukraine is shared by all parties in this House. Unfortunately, that support for Ukraine is not unanimous in this House. Conservatives are delaying Bill C-57, the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. Their MPs are calling the legislation woke. But most concerning is the leader of the Conservative Party's silence on support for Ukraine. He has not called for military, humanitarian or financial support for Ukraine. He's refused to criticize Russia's war crimes. His silence speaks volumes. Can the Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Foreign Affairs reassure Canadians that despite the Conservative leader's lack of support, this government will stand with the Ukrainian people until they win? Order. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Our support for Ukraine as they defend their freedoms, independence and democracy is unwavering. Since Russia began their unprovoked aggression, we have supported Ukraine with almost $10 billion in assistance. My colleague is a steadfast advocate for Ukraine and what he raises is troubling. This is not the time for unnecessary delays of this important legislation. This is not the time for doublespeak by the Conservatives and their leader. I ask the Leader of the Opposition to stop with the political games and stand with us to show Ukraine and Ukrainian Canadians that we are all united. Here. Colleagues, it's been going very well today in question period. I encourage all members 
I encourage all members, please, to listen to their whips as they ask you to keep your voices to yourselves. If you wish to have conversations, feel free to take them behind the curtains. The Honourable Member from Fundy Royal. Speaker, after eight years, this out-of-touch NDP Liberal government doesn't even know what a rural community is. In a totally transparent effort to save seats in Atlantic Canada, Liberals will be giving a rural rebate to downtown residents of the city of Fredericton, but not to someone who commutes 100 kilometres a day for work from an actual rural community of St. Martin's, population under 300. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will the Liberals quadruple the tax on Atlantic Canadians, or will they vote with us to axe the tax on all forms of home heating? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's hard to imagine a political party more opposed in interest to my region of Atlantic Canada than the Federal Conservative Party. They're painting a measure as only benefiting one region that has national application on just weeks after they uh, signaled that they will not support the development of offshore renewable energy in my region. Mr. Speaker, we are moving forward with a policy that is going to reduce the cost of home heating for many people across the country, and we are going to put more money in the pockets of rural residents across this country as well. It's the right path forward, we're going to protect the environment and save households money at the same time. The Honourable Member from South Shore, St. Margaret's. What's hard to imagine is that after eight years, the plummeting Prime Minister panicked last week with his carbon tax announcement. But Nova Scotians who made the decision to convert to cleaner propane have been exempted from that announcement and will have to pay 61 cents a litre more on their home heating. This flip-flopping Prime Minister has finally admitted that he's not worth the cost. Will the Liberals admit that they're going to quadruple the carbon tax on Atlantic Canadians after the next election? Or will they join us on Monday, the Conservatives, and vote to axe the carbon tax on all home heating? Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, what I find fascinating is I'm unable to discern from the Conservative Party's rhetoric around this issue is whether they actually support our decision to invest in measures that's going to reduce pollution across Canada and put more money in the pockets of households by getting heat pumps to them. For awareness, Mr. Speaker, this is the kind of measure that's going to save my, my neighbours thousands of dollars every year and reduce energy costs by creating a more efficient solution. It's going to have the same impact for people who use home heating oil right across the country. So I respond with a question to my honourable colleague. Does he actually support the measure that's going to save money for our residents? The honourable member for Bose. Mr. Speaker, it's been eight years of this totally out-of-touch government with the backing of the NDP and the Bloc. The Bloc is not worth the cost. Last week's announcement is a humiliation for Quebec. All Canadians need help, not just Atlantic Canadians, where Liberals are dropping in the polls. But yet again, dividing Canadians is what the Prime Minister does best. On Monday, will the Prime Minister ignore the bloc and vote in favour of our common sense Conservative motion to help all Canadians? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'm wondering where the common sense is because many opposition members were part of governments in Quebec and British Columbia, New Brunswick, and in the past they were in favour of carbon pricing. And at that time they seemed to believe in climate change and feel that it was an important issue. There are 200,000 families that use uh, heating oil, home heating oil in Quebec, and the price of that has increased two to four times faster than other types of heating. So we are going to work with Atlantic Canada to bring down those prices over the next few years. Member from Cloverdale, Langley City. Mr. Speaker, as we continue on the path of reconciliation, there is more and more evidence showing that Indigenous-led solutions lead to better, more sustainable outcomes and stronger, healthier communities. It's easy to see when it comes to mental wellness. For generations, Indigenous peoples have known that wellness and health depended on holistic connections and relationships with each other and with culture. By contrast, our narrow one-size-fits-all Western approach has left far too many Indigenous people by the wayside. What is the government doing to make sure Indigenous-led models of wellness are reaching the people who need them? 
The Honourable Minister. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank the member for Cloverdale Langley for this question. And I'm so grateful to Indigenous leaders who are working so hard on blending traditional and Western ways of healing. At the second annual National Summit on Mental Health, people gathered to share successful stories about programs that are designed by Indigenous people for Indigenous people, from a Hausa keynote speech to the Pimishka Project in northern Quebec. Healing is happening. And we can all learn from the wisdom of Indigenous partners. So I thank every participant for sharing their knowledge. The Honourable Member from Churchill, Kiwatinuk, Aski. Mr. Speaker, a new study found that big Canadian companies stashed away $120 billion in Luxembourg to avoid paying their taxes. This while working class Canadians and those on fixed incomes play by the rules and are falling further and further behind. This is the result of Liberal and Conservative governments creating a tax code that supports the wealthy not paying their taxes. And it's costing Canadians billions of dollars, dollars that could go to health care, housing or Indigenous communities. So when will this government finally crack down on wealthy tax cheats and make sure they pay their fair share. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Everyone must contribute their fair share to financing public services. Contrarily to the Conservative leader who demonizes the income tax and wants the rich to pay less, we are trying to redouble our efforts so that they pay. Uh, and, and that they do not use loopholes to avoid this responsibility. The CRA has hired experts and continues to use sophisticated tools to better detect and deal with the most serious cases of non-compliance. And this government really does care, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we've gathered here for the last hour or so of question period, I keep wanting to engage in the debate and talk about the climate crisis, but all I can think about is that while we're sitting here in such safety and security, the children of Gaza are terrorized and terrified. Children in Israel remain terrorized and terrified. We need a ceasefire and we need it now. And I want my government, I want the government of Canada that has always stood for peace, for, for solutions to conflicts that don't involve the bombing of civilians, which is a war crime in itself. Please, please, to my government, to any minister, stand up and say right now that Canada will call for a ceasefire on both sides now. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Honourable Member for her uh, compassion and her question. We've seen the horrific scenes of unspeakable violence of ha a Hamas abhorrent terrorism, and we unequivocally condemn the attack. The price of justice cannot be the continued suffering of Palestinian civilians. What is unfolding in Gaza is a human tragedy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs continues to engage in efforts to help Canadians. Mr. Speaker, we need humanitarian pauses. Canadians must be allowed to leave Gaza. More humanitarian aid needs to get in, and all hostages must be released. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And that brings in uh, to the end of question period. Before I recognize, avant que je, uh... Before I recognize any points of order, I have a message. Honor to inform the House that a communication has been received as follows. November 1st, 2023, Madam Speaker, I have the honour to inform you that the Right Honourable Mary May Simon, Governor General of Canada, signified royal assent by written declaration to the bill listed in the schedule to this letter on the first day of November.